Okay, welcome uh, today. Uh, I'm here with uh, Beryl Ojekdi from uh, Humboldt University in Germany. And uh, we will be talking today about the Early Career Network. Yes, uh, hello, Beryl from Berlin. And I'm joined today by Marco, uh, Marco Jansen. Uh, Jansen. <laughs> if you tease it so many times, you end up saying it by Marco Jansen at the um, Arizona State University, the outgoing president of the International Association for the Study of the Commons. And today we will be going inwards and talking about um, the making and origins of the Early Career Network or the IAC, which came to being after 30 years of uh, Ostrom and her colleagues um, establishing the IAC itself. So I have uh, had the honor to serve as the first representative on the Executive Council of the IAC. And I know the story from there on, but I don't know what led to that point. And so I have a couple of questions to Marco. And I'll start with the first one. So why now and why so late? <laughs> well, um, I wasn't uh, there 30 years ago, at least part of the ISC. So, but why do uh, we want to have uh, uh, representation of early career scholars? So uh, one of the uh, kind of uh, important uh, uh, opportunities I had in my career was uh, being part of uh, the kind of early career scholars. It was not a formal network, but there was a kind of a, a group of early career scholars uh, at the Resilience Alliance 20 years ago. And uh, so, uh, and I, I noticed that now a lot of the leadership of the uh, Resilience Alliance uh, is uh, done by by a number of the uh, people who were in the early career uh, uh, group. So I'm now the editor in chief of Ecology and Society, and some of the other um, early career former early career uh, scholars are now the directors of the Resilience Alliance. And I think yeah, that that demonstrates it's important to uh, nurture your uh, your the, your the future leaders. But it also provided important uh, opportunities for networking and uh, career development. So uh, we uh, we wrote papers together. We had collaborations, and a lot of these collaborations are still going on. And I thought that would be good to have a uh, group like that in the uh, uh, in the ISC. Uh, but how that will be kind of uh, established what will be the, the nature of the group. I did not want to define that myself. So I proposed uh, a few years ago that we should have a student representative on the, on the council, which is uh, very common in, uh, in uh, professional organizations, but with the idea that uh, there might be something more, but that will uh, uh, have to be also uh, created by the uh, by the uh, representative and, and other uh, uh, younger early career uh, scholars uh, themselves. So that's in the line with what we are, are studying. We want to stimulate self-governance. So we want, don't want to impose how that will look like. So we are great that you were elected to be the, the, the first uh, representative. And uh, yeah, you did a great job in, uh, in getting this to a, to a good start. Thank you very much. I'll take the compliments, but I have a couple of follow up questions. So the first one is how were the reactions at the beginning when you when when the idea of, uh, of promoting something like this came up to have actually a young or early career person to be having a seat at, at the table, you know, with the grown ups. Well, I think that it was recognized that it was overdue so that we typically the, the council are uh, uh, more senior members, and uh, so uh, yeah, it, it was no no objection. I think this was very uh, much welcomed. Uh, <clears throat> we had we had some challenges about given that, uh, as as you know, that there are different uh, 
kind of cultures and definitions about what is a student and how do we know people are a student. And uh, so there were some bureaucratic uh, issues, but we said, well, let's just go along and uh, what, what are the boundary rules in a way that was, uh, <laughs> so how do we define and why, uh, because initially we had it as uh, students, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, later we will come to that, we'll, we'll be brought in it. And so yeah, there were some questions about uh, the, the, the boundaries, but uh, I looked at a lot of other organizations, professional organizations, they typically had a student representative and that's what we wanted to, to start with. So, so we had to change the bylaws and uh, mm -hmm. was no kind of, uh, there were, I've not heard any objections from the membership uh, about it. So the, that was approved. And so that's why we could uh, extend it the, uh, the, the bylaws. It was a little, it was a technical problem in that we now got an even number of members on the council. So there would be <laughs> more a risk of getting ties in <laughs> at any votes, but typically we we don't have these contested votes on the on the council. But there was not a uh, uh, there was no objection to the the idea itself. So I, I think people will really appreciate to uh, kind of rejuvenate the uh, the council. Well, that's that's really good to hear. Um... But I'm wondering, and I don't want to dwell on it for too long, but considering the, the different associations that exist out there, you know, um, similar to IAC, that have already have such initiatives, what do you think for such an um, association who, who gathers people working on self-governance and, and, and collective action, why do you think it's, um, it's, it took a minute to get to this point? So I can only, in a way, speculate uh, because I was not there a long time ago. But I, I can imagine that there were not. Uh, uh, there's this is a kind of a unusual uh, association in that it is not related to a particular uh, discipline. Uh, it's also not a lot of focus on uh, training and, uh, and education. Uh, because we don't train a particular uh, discipline. And uh, that one of the mm. things that could be done much more uh, is to provide more training opportunities. We start uh, having a, our first summer school last uh, uh, year. So I think there was not, there was a lot of uh, focus on, uh, on, on uh, working with practitioners, but not a, a lot of focus on uh, training the next uh, generation and that might uh, uh, have uh, yeah uh, let that there was less a focus on the on the student uh, uh, participation mm -hmm. so but there was okay. never a restriction about who could be a part of the the, the council so uh, i do not know whether there have been early career uh, scholars uh, in in the council but uh, mm -hmm. um, so there's not a restriction to that, but not a focused uh, development. And I think that's, uh, I think that there is a very much a need for that. Yeah. Well, for now, um, I don't have any further questions on the origins. So uh, how did it go? You came as a- uh, uh, Student uh, counselor. Student <laughs> council. And uh, yeah, I know one of the things that we immediately uh, uh, discovered is there were different uh, kind of norms about what is called a student in the US and a student in, in Europe. But um, but yeah, you, you took, how did it go from there? Because you uh, took it to, um, uh, to a much bigger level and uh, maybe you can, uh, 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 so in Lima, the, you organized uh, a, um, uh, a meeting which was, I think there was about 60 people. There were not enough pizzas to feed, to feed uh, the whole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whole there crowd. were 60, 70 people, definitely. We had, an, uh, we had a scarcity of pizza at some point, but I don't know uh, what percentage came only for the pizza, but I think all stayed. So it was yeah. around 60, 70 people. Yeah, so I'll start with the, with the student counselorship title, I think, because that was one of our uh, conversations. 
And I didn't, um, well, well, first of all, I was really honored to be part of the, um, yeah, making history, I guess, with, with uh, working together with you. Um, but student um, counselorship, um, I knew that it had to be changed at some point because um, I thought that um, this, is, this position is there to represent something. So it, in my mind, I, I immediately changed to representative before we changed the bylaws. <laughs> it was clear to me that an association like ours had to stand with more than one person, one seat kind of attitude. And so I just had to understand, um, and which we then did together with you, who are actually the um, young or early career scholars within the IAC. And you know, we started with, um, with uh, doing an, um, all membership wide survey, which is not the most innovative way, but it's also always a good way to start for giving, getting a feeling. So we actually pretty soon realized that yes, there is a there's a need. People want to talk to each other, so that was good news. And the next step was how to bring together uh, different interests and different um, um, people from backgrounds and not only disciplinary but geographical backgrounds. And so uh, leading up to Lima, we have done some preparation, and then we um, had the. Um, the meeting of um, young, I think that night, it was the last time it was allowed to call the Young Scholars Network. Uh, we gathered um, in Lima and we basically worked around and you were there, I think two, three hours in, in breakout sessions, basically uh, who we are, who are we coming from, where do we, we wanna go and what kind of needs for exchange do we have? And so that night, I think we kind of settled on that we should be, or we want to call ourselves early career networks because, um, you know, staying true the principles of diversity and studying diversity of social situ action situations. Um, we are from all walks of lives, you know, if people at the age of 50, 60 also decide to take up an academic career or come back to it, or, you know, uh, as in my case, I came back to academia after many years. So early career network that was, and it wasn't very enthusiastic evening really, and we had a network, but of course, um, in most of these enthusiastic events, um, you know, everybody goes back home. <laughs> and so we had a network, but we didn't have members. And many people that, that uh, were happy about, but we didn't really have members. So, you know, started to get back to some of that momentum and reaching out people saying, um, so you might remember we had this momentum and we wanted to uh, work on research collaborations, but exchange about um, uh, career opportunities, how to go about navigating, um, uh, you know, um, different stages of the career really that at this point is quite precarious. Slowly but surely, I think at the end of 2019, uh, we also switched to a Slack uh, channel as, an, as a communication channel. And it was just, I think, really word of mouth and um, promotion. And one by one, um, a small group of people gathered. I think at the beginning was really five, six. There were many more that said, oh yeah, sounds good. But you know, from sounds good to let's do something is the next hurdle. <laughs> you might know yourself from your experiences. So, and um, 2020 with the small group of six people, we started really going in deep um, understanding of what are our values? What are the topics we want to talk about, work about? And so we started drafting a mission statement actually that this should be, as you're saying, you know, uh, similar to Resilient Alliance, that this is an alliance of not only colleagues, but long lasting relationships. You know, that you go back to 20 years ago, that time when we, you know, were in Lima or that time when we were Utrecht, that kind of th things. And then, you know, growing um, friendships. And from there on, we decided that we would like to um, further dialogue, dialogue that is interdisciplinary, intergenerational, and intersectional. And we um, established two working groups. One is on navigating interdisciplinarity. The other one is studying institutions. And so from there on, today, I think there are more than 50 members. And um, uh, to be honest, the second part of two, two, 2020, I just, I, uh, I didn't have to do much because it, it's gained its own momentum and uh, many people, many members were very active and they started doing their own organizations, events and you know the rest. So um, it was just the beginning to gather people, facilitate 
matchmaking and now it is a flourishing network i would say and we had our first peaceful transition of power you know we realize it's not it's not um taken can be <laughs> taken for granted these days yeah so yeah that's that's great to hear so what do you see as uh, uh, important uh, uh, activities that could be kind of facilitated by the broader isc network so we have the uh, a number of conferences going up uh, coming up and uh, so we have uh, also our um, cn members as part of the the different uh, steering committees so uh what what could be opportunities uh, uh for uh that, that that the coming years that the uh, uh yeah say the the isc can provide to to ecn uh, members yeah i think um yeah thanks for mentioning also 2020 basically was really the full integration of network in the IAC. That means um, whatever council we were planning uh, may be the World Commons Week 2020, uh, where we held a collective global keynote for the first time, may be the, uh, all the topical conferences within the IAC 2021, uh, the coordination of which we were immediately integrated from the beginning. So it already gave a different sense of recognition and empowerment too. And, um, so these are really things that have, you know, um, leveling the playing field a bit. Looking ahead, um, I think, uh, well, research grants, um, taking the collaboration to the next stage is something we have been thinking about. Um, uh, funding uh, to an extent that we can get together. You know, the ceasing model is something, for example, um, that is inspiring and, um, but for most of these grants, you do have to have uh, still um, an MPI or an, a tenured um, professor. And so um, we have been thinking about if you know we would identify calls, it would be possible to have uh, perhaps have a mentor to you know put something together to actually take basically the collaborations to the next level and really start um, start uh, writing some of these ideas. Yes, that's. Yes, so that that uh, there are us as a more senior as senior scholars, we often get a lot of uh, uh, request of uh, being part of uh, uh, activities, editing a book or a special issue, and and that might not always be on our uh, also that we can do, but this will be uh, great opportunities for uh, for for a group of uh, the career uh, uh, scholars. So, so that will be a, uh, uh, yeah, to have some sharing, some of the opportunities uh, that, that, that we, we get, that will be a, uh, that will be one of the options. Yes. And also using the more senior scholars as, as uh, kind of mentors um, for, uh, uh, for activities. Um, I could also imagine more kind of, uh, uh, training options uh, like um, yeah, uh, collaborative um, yeah, summer schools or winter schools where you do some uh, uh, collaborative uh, uh, activities. That's also a good way to, to, to reach out to other people who are not yet familiar with uh, the, the material we work with also, but to also kind of have some common kind of training of methods or uh other uh, topics so yeah i, I can uh, yeah funding is always a challenge but indeed uh, there sometimes there's a good opportunity to to collaborate to to get uh, to get funds so uh, yeah exactly so that, that would be a great uh, opportunity yeah. and i also noticed uh, the the podcast that uh, uh, that seems to be now very popular among the uh the early career uh, scholars and so uh, the isc started working together with uh, the in common podcast and now also the, the ecn is part of it so this is this is uh, also a great way to uh, uh yeah to experiment yes. and and develop uh, uh new skills so. Definitely, yeah. Thanks, thanks for the shout out. So um, the Early Career Network is cooperating uh, with the Incomes podcast um, for our podcast series on navigating interdisciplinarity. 
and um, at least the first five episodes will be hosted in um, in, in Commons um, space, and uh, they have been very helpful uh, also um, with uh, you know nuts and bolts of of this uh, first kickoff phase, as well as Michael Scone because he's also very experienced with podcasting. So um, yeah, there's uh, there's quite uh, quite quite some uh, activities in the oven and uh, in the next months they will be coming uh, one by one hopefully and another thing we're working is actually an opinion piece uh, on um, uh, in slash formal rules and uh, from a from a grounded perspective and our struggles for, for, for those who have been empirically working with institutions uh, so we are trying to take the conversation a little further beyond divides that on the grounds are not so easy to put in boxes and you know this dissect the grammar of basically so yeah i'm looking at the time um we have still a couple of minutes for further questions that i can torment you with if i may sure okay well um one thing is that um, and we, we spoke about this a couple of times, but uh, if uh, for our today's audience, you would like to also share it. When you look back uh, in your uh, early career years yourself, um, could you be able to pinpoint to one or two occurrences or, or acquaintances or, or things that happened that were really influential for setting you on, on the path to where you are today? Yes, uh, certainly two uh, events. Um, so one was a um, sorry a uh, conference at Duke University. I think this was the the first conference of the kind of human dimensions of uh, global environmental change. Uh, I was there with uh, the uh, my uh, group from the Netherlands. So my my um, co uh, collaborators from the Netherlands, uh, we presented our work there. Uh, I presented some work on uh, complex adaptive systems and agent-based modeling. Uh, this was in the uh, mid nineties. And um, Buzz Holling, C.S. Holling gave the uh, kind of the final address as the kind of the, 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 yeah, the, the senior leader of, of, of the broader field. And he mentioned that uh, there, there was an important uh, development. Uh, um, and he referred to the Santa Fe Institute, the complex data systems. He said there was nothing like that he had seen at the conference. And I said, well, he wasn't at my talk. So I went to him after his uh, talk and, and got in contact with him. And uh, he ended up being an important advocate for, for my work. He ended up on my uh, uh, dissertation committee, and uh, yeah, he also uh, shared his uh, uh, my dissertation with with other colleagues. So that opened a lot of doors. Uh, so uh, don't hesitate to uh, to contact uh, more senior people at conferences. Uh, that can be very uh, key. Another was a meeting at the Resil uh, of uh, organized by the Resilience Alliance in Stockholm, uh, in which. Uh, uh, I was I was a postdoc at that time, and I presented some work on uh, modeling institutions, and I that was very new area for me. And there was a uh, a scholar named Eleanor Ostrom in the audience, and I got uh, to meet her. I knew some of her work, but uh, yeah, she uh, said, "Well, uh, that's very interesting. What you do, you should uh, come to Indiana, so we can." Uh, 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 talk more about it. So that's uh, started my uh, my collaboration with with Lynn Ostrom. And so yeah, it's it, having creating those opportunities to meet uh, yeah the more senior uh, people and see that they can see what you are doing and a kind of matchmaking. That's kind of what I hope that uh, uh, also uh, having an ECN. Uh, within the ISC could uh, could facilitate so because these these are it's important to get published and published in good journals etc but it's also having opportunities to to meet uh, people so uh, so you have some personal connection and that can really open doors 
Yeah, thanks for the encouraging uh, anecdote. I think it really, it's uh, you sometimes we just don't know uh, if and how and, and what, you know, you, you want to connect and how to meaningfully collect. I think it's connect, it's art of, uh, art of growing as a scholar, I guess. Well, not just as a scholar, as a, as a professional in that sense. And that's very inspiring. I, um, in parentheses, also am very thankful for uh, contacting you three or four years ago <laughs> and wanting to just drop by uh, Arizona. And uh, you said yes. And uh, here we are today, I think. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> was great uh, uh, catching up uh, with you and uh, yeah I look if people have questions don't hesitate to to uh, to contact us so uh, thank you we will, we will provide the information to contact us in the uh, below the below the video okay thank you thank you thanks everyone